Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh To sell me in peace to the rest of you This is Black Heart Sign and Black Inn I'm going to ask you to hit that share button Even before you hit the like or the subscribe button Because the uh, message is more important than the messenger And in any case uh, This message is going to be about something That does not involve the gender wars This is about Pan-Africanism And the relationship between black folks Of differing national origins um, I went to South Africa on a vacation not too long ago. I was told beforehand, before going by, by everybody that wasn't black, even by non-black South Africans, that I'm not black and I'm not going to be considered black when I get there, that I'm going to be considered colored and uh, that they're going to laugh at me. The original South Africans are going to laugh when I speak to them in Zulu and have the fist up and talking about Amandla and is where led to. Well, when I got to South Africa and I greeted people in Zulu, I was welcomed as an African American. I, none of that stuff happened. I was tr actually treated better there than I was by African Americans who would like to cast doubts upon my blackness a lot of times. I saw a lot of parallels, a lot of similarities. But let me also tell you all this. I mean, let me put it like this. The, the similarities there were actually so great that at times I forgot that my people are not descendant from South Africa. But then something happened. I heard about the xenophobia, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I'm going to blame both the Nigerians and the South Africans for these xenophobic attacks. Both of you got some things that you contributed to this. This conflict was inevitable because both of you had cultural problems you were not willing to deal with. One of them being the arrogance of the Southern Nigerian. And this is known, people know in Southern Nigeria, the arrogant, street smart, proud of it, it just it's hard to deal with a lot of folks there. And this is known. And, and northern Nigeria is not even like this, but the south is like this. Mostly the Lagos metro area. People know this. Even Nigerians know this. And this is bad because every Nigerian can't be like the stereotype. But they all got to pay for it. And in South Africa, a lot of black South Africans still feel superior to other Africans. This is not acceptable. So consequently, this was bound to happen. Nigerians moved into South Africa, invested. Some did well, others committed crimes. In many cases, though, they didn't like the South Africans. And many South Africans began to not like the Nigerians. And so violence sometimes spread. But then also, um, you had some uh, East Africans that came in and set up businesses, and most of them didn't cause any trouble. One insane man from Ethiopia, he was insane, felt up on a schoolgirl, as I was told by somebody who lived in that province. And when this insane man felt up on a schoolgirl, uh, the locals, of course, found out, because she told. And so they went to the police and they found out that his community was hiding him, trying to arrange for him to leave the country. And when this happened, of course, um, the locals went mad and they beat the crap out of the ones who knew this man. They got the vengeance. The message was sent. Don't go bothering Zulu women like this, especially little girls, underage girls. They're not going to tolerate that. Then... Some Somali men who had a shop flirted with a, a, a Zulu woman. And the people there knew, the Zulus knew, you don't flirt with Somali women because they're very endogamous and you have to be Muslim to even qualify, which is fine, but that means that the reverse is also true. You got to be Zulu. You ain't going to just come along here and flirt with Zulu women. So the Zulu men beat that ass, but they got that vengeance. In these cases, if these stories are true, you understand why there was a backlash. But then later on, you got to start 
and think, okay, now if these folks didn't do anything else, then why are you going on these so-called xenophobic but really negrophobic sprees against Mozambicans and East Africans and Zimbabweans and Zambians and Namibians and Angolans and Congolese? And these groups as nations never did anything to you. And actually, they housed a lot of your freedom fighters that were able to make it into exile during your anti-apartheid struggle. What happened to that freedom fighting spirit? What went on? See, I understand what Julius Malema said. When a Nigerian commits a crime, you don't double the punishment because they're Nigerian. I agree, you don't. But by the same token, I want this to be known. Nigeria, I'm not going to let you off the hook. Most of you aren't like the stereotype. It's a stereotype. Many of aren't that way, just like most African Americans aren't the stereotype. But the problem is that just like when many African Americans won't stand against the stereotype and tell the negative stereotypes, nigga, you a disgrace, the same thing happened in Nigeria. Most Nigerians ain't money scammers or credit card scam artists, and they're not drug dealers. Most of them are not. What happens is that the ones who are still celebrated because they made money. That's where the issue comes in. Even the innocent don't always look down on them because you know what? They made money. Same thing happened in Somalia when some of them went pirates. And the pirates initially were just like a coast guard. Of course, they were called pirates, but they were really functioning like a Coast Guard. But guess what happened? When they really became nothing but just rogue pirates and they came back to the mainland with money, everything was allowed to them. There was no social ostracization of them at all. They were allowed to get married to the most beautiful women because they could afford to. The fathers of these women didn't say, wait a minute, nigga, you a pirate. You ain't doing this. That's where the problem came in. So every one of these cultures is now having to face consequences of reputation based on these things. Cultures are not, especially when it's black, cultures are not going to be stereotyped uh, by the worst that 85% of the population does. They're going to be stereotyped by the absolute worst that anybody can do in the community without being socially ostracized for it. That's how black people get stereotyped. And not only black people, but especially black people. Whatever the worst thing you can do in a black community is and not be socially, stere or not be, uh, socially ostracized for is what the community gets stereotyped for. Fortunately, we're not stereotyped as a community of pedophiles because most of us really don't play that stuff. We just want to have proof before we say someone did it. That's reasonable. That's reasonable. But unfortunately, somehow, for some, for some reason, I don't know exactly why, um, white folk are known for this, but nobody looks and says, oh, here comes the child molester. The reason for this, again, is white supremacy. And that brings, us, brings me right back to the original point. South Africa, Nigeria, Angola, Namibia, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Botswana, to a certain extent, despite its great economy. Mozambique, these nations, Angola, these nations are all victims of white supremacy. And these attacks in South Africa are not xenophobic. They're negrophobic. How do we know not one Chinese, white person, or Indian is reporting violence against their people and looting of their businesses? They are getting, they're, they're being left alone. Everything's cool. Everything's fine. In China, you could be black and go about your daily business for a long time and nothing happened to you. <laughs> you could also go through certain areas and get the crap beat out of you. In India, you might go about your business and nothing happens, and one day out the blue, everybody comes and beats up on you. In Africa, no Chinese and no Indian is being surrounded and having the crap beaten out of them. No one is. Nobody white is being surrounded having the crap beat out of them. Now, whites do get hit up for more money. That does happen. 
When I went to South Africa, I was welcomed with open arms, but I want to make this very plain. I'm not going to judge you only based on that. I'm going to judge you based on how you welcome me and how you welcome other Africans. I've never been to Nigeria and I don't want to go, to be honest with you. I'm actually more related to people in Nigeria than I am to people in South Africa, but I would not want to go. Why? Well, because Nigeria, there's the North, and I'm fine with it, but I don't want to be in the same nation as the South right now. Secondly, I don't appreciate the way many of you have treated African Americans, and I'm talking mostly to you Southerners, not even you Northerners. I don't appreciate the way that you treated African Americans. Later in life, I found out that you treat each other the same way, so it's not just African Americans. But I don't appreciate the way you talk cash shit, even though to you it's a joke in your culture. And then turn around and go all around the world and take the same custom to everybody and think they're supposed to be okay with it. No, you've caused problems for people. Your own and others. You set up a bad reputation. When I went to Malaysia... Nobody had a problem with Africans. They just had a problem with Nigerians. But when they asked me where you're from, and I said originally Africa, what part? West Africa. Are you Nigerian? Do you see? I don't feel like fighting with a bunch of Malaysians because they think I'm Nigerian. Malaysians don't start fights with people. And I don't start fights with people. So why should I be in a conflict with a, a friendly group of people because of the stupid stuff you've done? Most of you haven't even done it. You just don't ostracize the ones who did. Just like my people are guilty. I'm not letting us off the hook. How we haven't ostracized people who have done certain things in our communities. And we're paying for it too. I mean, hell, what is the whole reason behind the wall of silence between black men and black women in America? What is the reason for it? The reason for it is because dysfunctional niggas in our community are celebrated by our women as sexy. Not even though they're dysfunctional, but because they are dysfunctional, they are sexually appealing because that's how we're socialized. And even though I'm married to a non ados black woman, there's no guarantee that this is not going to come home one day and cause an issue with us. I mean, after all, she did acquire U.S. citizenship. We don't, neither one of us comes from a culture where we think that sort of thing is okay. But from having been in America, something traumatizing may have happened to her. I don't know. I know I went through my own traumas. This could turn around and affect what goes on between us. It may not. It could go either way. That's how bad this problem is. And you're underestimating it. Both of you, the South Africans and the Nigerians. And this conflict between the two of you was inevitable. Because both of you feel you're superior to other people, especially other black people. But what I'm going to say is this. If the two of you can't get along because you're too much alike or because you're too different, whatever the case is, leave others out of this. Leave alone Angolans, Mozambicans, Zambians, Zimbabweans, whose national anthems a song to the same tune as your national anthems, both of which call on God to look out for Africa, not just South Africa, but Africa. Leave alone the Tanzanians and the Kenyans. Quit looking down on them. Both of you quit looking down on them. You Nigerians and you South Africans, quit looking down on other black folks and quit looking up to non-black people. You see, both of you have a crazy relationship with Pan-Africanism in the first place. I'm not going to get into that. I'm simply going to say that, frankly, you both need another dose or an injection of it. Because Pan-Africanism is not something that, for me, is a religion. It's not that. It is a necessity. That's what it is. Other people, when you're fighting with each other, are willing to come in and take advantage of this. When Elephants fight, the grass suffers. And these folks are willing to come in after you two have locked horns and stranded each other and you die of starvation because you can't unlock with each other. They're willing to come in and farm and grow their wealth from your bodies. The Chinese, the Indian, the cracker, neither of whom are, as a culture respect you, even if the individuals that are there with you do, neither of their cultures respect you. And it's not because of anything you've done wrong. Their cultures don't respect you because you're darker than them. And that's all it takes. And here you guys are. 
fighting with each other over bones while they eat the meat. Well, the Nigerians are coming and, to, and, and the other people are coming, the foreigners are coming and taking our jobs. What about the white Greek man I saw that had a safari company? He had created jobs for black folks. They're working for him and they were not arguing with him. Now, if that white Greek man who became a South African citizen was in fact a black man from elsewhere and created a safari company, you'd be trying to take money from him. And then eventually you'd loot his business. It wouldn't succeed. Why? Because you wouldn't support it. That's the problem. That's what it comes to right there. And it's like that in Nigeria too. What happens when a black man from the US goes back to Nigeria after having left Nigeria with his business, wants to expand it in Nigeria, and he's got a white employee. You keep looking at the white man asking him, well, what is your final decision? Uh, he has a boss that's standing right there looking at you. This is a problem in both of your minds. But both of you still feel superior to other black people. You two are going to have this conflict. If you cannot stop this conflict, then at least leave other black nationalities out of it. At the very least. Both of you are elephants for a good reason. You both, you have talent. South Africa, you have intelligence and talent and you have experience fighting white supremacy in the form of apartheid. You're now coming to grips with experience fighting global white supremacy. Nigeria, you have intelligence and raw hustle. You have a knack for creating opportunities where others can't do it and for finding opportunities where others cannot detect them. You can use these things or you can abuse them. I understand that some cab drivers went up against a community of Nigerians in uh, Pretoria, I think it was. And I understand that one of the Nigerians pulled a gun and shot one of the cab drivers. To me, this is a sign of narcissism. Not what the South Africans did. Oh no, I'm talking about what the Nigerian did. If your people got a bad reputation, then you don't have to suffer for what they did, but you gotta break yourself away from that community. You, you gotta do it. African Americans are coming to realize this. If you ain't going to participate in the BS that defines the black community, you got to break away and form another community that won't do it. We're coming to grips with this. It's time for you Nigerians to come to grips with the same thing. You overtaken certain neighborhoods in, uh, uh, in every South African city. It's not a crime that you went and all of you settled there and, and now the neighborhood is all you. That's not what the crime is. The crime is when many decide that they're going to do whatever illegal there is to make the money. That's where the crime comes in. When people get tired of the crime and come after you, you don't pull a gun and say, I'm going to shoot you because you're sick of the crime I'm committing. You don't even pull a gun and say, I'm going to shoot you because I'm, you're sick and tired of the crime that my neighbor's committing. You don't even do that. The right thing to do is to say, is to look at your own people and say, okay, we got this neighborhood, it's ours by number, but if you're going to do all this weak and nasty stuff and in somebody else's land, I'm going to leave this neighborhood. I'm not going to stay here with you. You're not going to sit up here and come into this other, somebody else, another black nation and disrespect them like this and I just stay with you. No, that's not happening. That's the way that this works. How dare y'all turn around and retaliate against the MTN headquarters in Nigeria? You know goddamn well why it is that y'all go abroad and people got issues with you. In South Africa, how dare you turn around and start fighting against other black folks, Nigerian or not? And start burning their shops and looting their shops and you let crackers and a bunch of mulattoes from India and the Chinese with a dog eating behinds, all of whom can't stand you or respect you. And you just leave them alone. You let them open up their shops and thrive and make business. But when a black person does it, you want to go and burn and loot even when they're not from Nigeria, even when they ain't done, even when they haven't committed a crime. Even when they're from Nigeria and committed no crime and the business was legitimate. How dare you do this? I'm thinking that maybe what we should do is we should just take the xenophobes from both nations and put them on one of them uninhabited islands and just let them not wipe each other the hell out. I'm thinking that's what y'all need to do. Maybe that's what the African Union can do. Because let's just be honest, man. Let, let's just call it what it is. South Africans may be reacting to some nasty stuff that they've seen Nigerians do. Certainly. But the way they're reacting is also biased. 
and most South Africans are not xenophobic and they're disgusted by this. And most Nigerians are not into any kind of crime or corruption and they're disgusted by this. But do you think that just because they are that those two can get along very well and uh, trust each other easily? No, because each one does not know that the other one is like this. The honest individual from Nigeria who means no harm does not know that the, uh, that the honest South African who means no harm means him no harm. And the reverse is true. There is no trust between even the innocent because of what the guilty have done. And you created a situation just perfect for somebody else to come along. The elephants are fighting, the grass is suffering, and the vultures are about to have a feast, and so are the hyenas. That's what this comes down to. And frankly, I'm sick and tired of even trying to preach to you ignorant ass niggas the importance of, even when you don't like each other because all black folks aren't the same, the importance of not fighting with each other when you got a common enemy that'll wipe all of you out, wipe all of us out. The importance of not doing this stuff and making enemies where we previously did not have enemies. I hope that this has been a benefit. Black Heart, sign a blackout. Salam alaikum.